It's another animal heavy news week here on Weekly Weird News, which should come as no surprise given that we are, of course, in the midst of an animal human war. Mm -hmm. And this is a world war being fought on all fronts, not just the Strait of Gibraltar, where orcas have been biting the rudders off of any boat that enters their territory. Air, land, sea, nowhere is safe. And it's all our fault that we as a species brought this upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. Every animal to join this fight has a legitimate score to settle with us. Yeah, and uh, while we've talked about orcas, dolphins, birds, sea otters, and river otters so far, somehow we have failed to account for hogs. They were right there all along. One of the first animals to fight back. An animal that is so built with its own natural armor. Built for war. That it takes... At least a couple AR-15s to save all the children That's in your yard. That's right. The ever-increasing global feral hog epidemic that we've been covering for years is just another aspect of the animal-human world war. And like everyone else, they have, they've got their reasons. The ones here in North America aren't even native. We brought them here as livestock. And the ones that escaped morphed into the razor tusk killing machines terrorizing our continent to this day. Send us back. Yeah. Send us back. And stop it's too late us. now. They've sharpened those tusks, and they're going to use them. And yeah, back in the old world, across the Atlantic, where they came from, uh, they're also known to wreak havoc upon human civilization. And some of those hogs have an even bigger motive for exacting their revenge. Humanity, in its boundless arrogance, turned them into radioactive mutants. In southern Germany and the surrounding areas, wild boars can't even reliably be hunted for food anymore because they are so likely to be dangerously radioactive. How did they get so radioactive, you ask? Well, 37 years ago, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine had a little oopsie, whoopsie. <laughs> they made a whole show about it. And, uh, well, here we are nearly four decades later, and the boars are somehow still radioactive hundreds, thousands of miles away. So, thank you, USSR. Great job. Except not bad, not terrible. <laughs> uh, it turns out, based on more recent research, it may have been a bit unfair to pin all of the blame for Europe's radioactive hogs on Chernobyl. Here's Vice. Nuclear weapons tests that took place in the mid-20th century are still a major source of radioactivity in Germany's wild boars, accounting for anywhere from 10 to 68% of contamination in meat samples from these animals, reports a new study. The discovery could help to explain why wild boars have remained so much more radioactive than other species in their ecosystems, which is a long-standing problem known as the wild boar paradox. <laughs> Previously, scientists assumed this radiation was almost entirely produced by the catastrophic meltdown of the Chernobyl nuclear reactor in 1986. But the new research shows that weapons tests are also a substantial and long-lived source of environmental contamination. A finding that is particularly ominous in light of Russia's nuclear saber-rattling during its invasion of Ukraine. You think these hogs are bad? Wait till you see what we have coming down the pike. Yeah. They have those wolves up, like, around Chernobyl as well. Well, yeah, I, yeah the whole ecosystem around uh, Chernobyl is uh, in interesting things mm -hmm. definitely happening there. But, but yeah, uh, now in, in, in Germany... Let's do it again. In Germany, you can't even go have a tall, fresh, frosty mug with a nice side of... The forbidden radioactive sausage. And you, and you can't have an AR-15 either. That's true. So how are you going to protect yourself? That's right. I guess, I guess the people of Germany are on their own. They are. Uh, it continues. Nuclear fallout produces radioactive particles, including isotopes of the element cesium, which can still be found in ecosystems today. Radio cesium has a half-life of 30 years, meaning that half of it decays in that time period. So it makes sense that concentrations of the contaminant have been gradually receding in Europe over time. Wild boars are the bizarre exception to this rule. Radio cesium levels in these animals have remained constant, a puzzling fact that has rendered them unsafe to eat and has thus contributed to a rampant overpopulation of boars across Europe as demand for their meat has plummeted. Now, scientists co-led by Georg Steinhauser and Bin Feng, who are radiochemists at the Vienna University of Technology, have discovered that much of the persistent contamination can be traced back to nuclear weapons testing. The findings suggest that multiple sources of nuclear fallout can vastly surpass the impact of any singular yet dominant source, and illustrates that strategic decisions to conduct atmospheric nuclear tests 60 to 80 years ago still impact remote natural environments, wildlife, and a human food source today, according to a study published on Wednesday in the journal Environmental Science and Technology. Thanks, Grandpa! 
Yeah, I have become death, destroyer of hogs. I have become death, destroyer of worlds, but I'm not going to be around when the world is actually dealing with any of that. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Well, you know how those hogs act when they get that radiocesium in them. They, they don't want to give it up. Yeah. It's... No, it feels pretty good. They, yeah. And technically, it's a defense mechanism for them. Yeah, it's working like, hey, well sudden, in their favor. I ate this green, this bright green glowing apple, and all of a sudden, the guys don't want to hunt me anymore. I'm just going to put two, to, two and two together yeah. and keep eating the glowing material. It's worked out pretty great for them. Because yeah. who wants to go through the trouble of hunting a hog that you can't even eat? And now they're, people are scared of them, too. So As this they is should a, be. Yeah, yeah. Basically, different types of radioactivity have different radioactive signatures. And uh, after examining a bunch of dead boars in southern Germany, they found that based on the different cesium isotopes detected, most of the radioactivity in those boars is from atmospheric nuclear weapons tests, not just Chernobyl. They also found that when soil is contaminated from multiple radioactive sources, quote, it's like a snowball effect. The sources mixed together and became a new source that can get stronger. This is the reason, we think, why the cesium contamination is so strong and persistent. As for why every other animal species has declined in radioactivity over the decades, while boars have remained pretty much the same all this time, here's the article again. But why boars, specifically? After all, radioactivity from weapons tests around the world affects everyone. Scientists have determined that wild boars are particularly vulnerable to consuming mixed source contaminants because they rely on underground food sources, especially truffles. Ooh, the forbidden truffle! Which become radioactive hotspots as cesium sinks into the soil. Quote, cesium migrates through the soil very slowly at only a few millimeters per year, and sometimes even less, Steinhauser said. As time goes by, truffles seize more of the cesium, but at the same time, less cesium is left because it's decaying away according to its half-life. These are two different mechanisms, or two different effects, that cancel each other out so the outcome is constant. It's a constant level over many, many years. That's the bottom line of our current hypothesis that is supported by the study. So basically, the cesium sinks down, the mushrooms absorb the cesium, the boars dig up the mushrooms, eat it, and then poop it out and die and decay, and now the cesium is back on top. And rinse and repeat. You gotta, just, this is just how things are now. You gotta love nature, don't you folks? It's it's the circle of life. It really is. It, that's what happens when humans shove their way into the circle of life. Robert Oppenheimer failed to account for hogs. Yeah, tragic. Makes me want to go watch the Nicolas Cage movie Pig again. About a man and his hog hunting for truffles. Mm. A feel-good comedy. Not a feel-good, not a comedy. Great movie, though. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that's fun, of course. Um, yeah, just picturing that, this constant cycle of radioactive waste and death. No, it's fine. It just, it sinks into the soil. It goes away. The only uh, thing that, the only way this can go wrong is if uh, there exists some sort of animal that exclusively uh, eats food from, you know, a few inches underground. Yeah, but, but that would never happen. <laughs> so yeah, we originally thought the boars were radioactive because of a nuclear accident 37 years ago, but turns out they're radioactive because of nuclear weapons tests 60 years ago, and because boars dig up mushrooms, it's just sort of how things are going to be, indefinitely. Because there's no way that they're going to stop eating those delicious truffles. Unless we give them what they want. Our homes, and our farms, yes. and our children. What the, what the German boars want are exactly what the German people of the 1930s and 40s want. Give the land back to the boars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, excited to meet Hogler, the, the pig version of Hitler. Yeah, he's coming. Yeah. Very cool. But let's move on to news that is, it's not about the horrific long-lasting consequences of mankind's hubris, to some news that combines two of our favorite topics. Otters have been in the news a lot lately, whether it's sea otters stealing surfboards or river otters viciously attacking swimmers, and it's time for news about an otter committing a cool crime. Here's the BBC. A hotel has caught a sneaky otter, red-handed, after putting up CCTV to find the thief responsible for the loss of 50 koi carp worth about 100,000 pounds. Jesus. The Grosvenor Pulford Hotel near Chester set up cameras after the fish, each worth about 2,000 pounds, went missing. The footage showed the unexpected interloper avoiding electric fences and snatching a carp before escaping. Nelson Hotels and Inns director Andrew Nelson said the otter being revealed as the cunning culprit was a surprise. A hotel representative said they noticed they were losing fish from two ponds in the hotel spa's Asian sensory garden, so set up the CCTV to see if they could unmask the thief. 
The resulting video, which the hotel shared on Facebook, showed the otter avoiding an electric fence, which was put in place to prevent herons from catching fish and stealing in to catch a carp. 100,000 pounds of fish. They didn't account for the humble otter. Might be wise to uh, respect them next time. We should inject some cesium into these otters just to see what happens. Ooh, yeah. Find out what they like. Start yeah. radiating it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, rest in peace. Rest in peace to those fish. But it is incredibly funny that this swanky-ass hotel is out 100,000 pounds due to the mischievous actions of a single Eurasian river otter with no concept for how expensive ornamental fish cost. They're just like, damn, this is a big fish. A carp's a carp. That's a big, beautiful fish. Yeah. I'm going to take it. So you got to wonder if these koi fish even tasted particularly good or if the otter only kept coming back simply because they were easy pickings. In any case, it's, uh, it's a cool crime. It's nice to see otters fighting back, not with violence, but by hitting humans where it really hurts, their wallets. It's a good form of protest from the animals. Yeah. That, uh-oh, the animals have figured out capitalism, and now they know how to dismantle it. They're ruining our ships. They're eating all of our expensive carp. Yeah, thank you, comrade. Uh... Orcas, yeah. comrade otters, comrade yeah. boars. But, uh, and, and they're the most delicious, expensive piece of food on the planet. The, the truffle. Ruining that by dying and re-radiating. Yeah. You want some truffle on those fries? Why are these fries glowing? Don't worry it's about it. Cool slime fries. Yeah, moving on now to a corner of the animal kingdom that we might not think about all that much, but which has also apparently declared its war on ha uh, humankind. Parasitic worms. I hate this story so much, <laughs> and it gives me an irrational fear that I don't want to have constantly lurking in the background. Well, you don't live in Australia, so... Yeah, but you never know. With the way things are these days, with all the Australians invading America... That's true. Could every be here every day, more Australians cross the Pacific. Yeah. You can't even go out in L.A. anymore without hearing that accent. Yeah. What, are you saying Norway or no way? I can't tell. Anyways, here's the Guardian. It was a fairly regular day on the ward for Canberra Hospital Infectious Diseases physician Dr. Sanjaya Sananayaki until a neurosurgeon colleague called him and said, Oh my God, you wouldn't believe what I just found in this lady's brain. And it's alive and wriggling. Is it a penis? The neurosurgeon, Dr. Hari Priya Bandi, had pulled an eight centimeter long parasitic roundworm from her patient, prompting her to call on Sananayaki and other hospital colleagues for advice about what to do next. The patient, a 64-year-old woman from southeastern New South Wales, was first admitted to her local hospital in late January 2021 after suffering three weeks of abdominal pain and diarrhea, followed by a constant dry cough, fever, and night sweats. By 2022, her symptoms also included forgetfulness and depression, prompting a referral to Canberra Hospital. An MRI scan of her brain revealed abnormalities requiring surgery. <sighs> it continues. But the neurosurgeon certainly didn't go in there thinking they would find a wriggling worm, Sananyake said. Neurosurgeons regularly deal with infections in the brain, but this was a once-in-a-career finding. No one was expecting to find that. The surprising discovery prompted a team at the hospital to quickly come together to uncover what kind of roundworm it was and, most importantly, decide on any further treatment the patient might require. We just went for the textbooks, looking up all the different types of roundworm that could cause neurological invasion and disease, Sananayake said. Their search was fruitless, and they looked to outside experts for help. Canberra is a small place, so we sent the worm, which was still alive, straight to the laboratory of a CSIRO scientist who is very experienced with parasites, Sananayake said. He just looked at it and said, oh my goodness, this is Ophidoscaris robertsi. Ophidoscaris robertsi is a roundworm usually found in pythons. The Canberra Hospital patient marks the world first case of the parasite being found in humans. And hopefully the last. We did it. So yeah. yeah, not only did this lady have a fucking worm living in her brain for two years, just wriggling around in there. Making her depressed, destroying memories. Like Homer with that crayon. They pull it out and she's like, hey, feeling pretty good. Yeah, it is like that. I remember my kids' names. But yeah, not only did she have a worm in her, her brain, it wasn't even a type of worm that's ever been observed in humans. She's has the cool distinction of being the first ever person for yeah. this to happen to. And as for how it got there, well, first off, this lady, like 
all Australians, lives in an area totally overrun with snakes. Mm -hmm. It's just something they accept. As part of living there, I don't understand it, but they <laughs> but they, they, choose, we... they choose to continue living in this, this hell of a place. This, as this we've God forsaken place. As we've learned, at least they're like cohabitating and not trying to abuse and remove the snakes because then they would fight back. Uh, yeah, they are. Humans in Australia are so outnumbered by animals that want to kill them that they are forced to actually respect the ecosystem. Yes. They that offer up in. tourists every couple of months. Yeah. Uh, they're like, yeah. Yeah, you see that video online of that woman picking up that uh, that squid that could kill them that, that, in one that cute little octopus. Look yeah. at it, he's so small. I love the comments are just like, ah! yeah, <laughs> just don't fucking move. Uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, so she uh, she lives in an area with snakes, aka Australia. But yeah, as if worrying about snake bites wasn't bad enough, apparently Australians now need to worry about snake parasites getting up in their brains. Yeah, literal brain worms. Yeah, and this woman's a boomer. She's a boomer with brain worms. <laughs> I want to see what she's been posting on Facebook throughout this whole medical ordeal. Yeah, uh, this might be weird. More it made widespread her racist. <laughs> more, more widespread than we might know. <laughs> she got just steadily more and more racist. Turns out there are many such cases. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to see MRIs of every American over the age of fifty. Yeah, it, but instead of a worm, they have the Gazden snake in their head. <laughs> <laughs> don't snap on snake. Yeah, but also don't put it in your brain. Yeah. Anyway, she apparently enjoyed foraging wild greens to take home and use in her cooking. Oh, what a fun hobby. Except yeah. uh, the theory is that a snake shit out some worm eggs onto some of the wild greens that she took home, which she managed to, I guess, not wash off properly before eating. Mm -hmm. So in it went. The worm had found its host and was probably a little surprised and confused at how much roomier the place was than it expected. I was told this would be a long tube-like environment but this yeah. thing's huge yeah Scrappy. grab hold of these controls and start cooking <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah well still uh very terrifying to even to even yeah. think about uh, interestingly this is like the first mention i've seen of ivermectin since oh, there you go since it was in the news all that years ago like yeah they put her on ivermectin because it's actually oh! that's what it's actually used for is uh <laughs> dealing with parasites because they're like yeah i mean we found the one in her brain but like there's it's been in there so long, there's a good chance there's, like, multiple worms throughout her body at this point. I know point. a guy in America. We'll call up and get some ivermectin. Yeah, from. some guy who has a whole fucking storage unit full of ivermectin and is willing to part with it for cheap. Let's give that guy a call. Yeah. Well, the, you know, this would never happen to Americans because we deep fry all of our food. That's true. Nothing's Nothing, going to survive. Nothing's going to survive that. No. Uh-uh. But that's enough human-animal conflict for now. Let's switch gears to a story about a human and an animal being bros. But in a way that's kind of shocking, definitely illegal, and really gross. And no, not like that, thankfully, because we have had those stories recently. Nothing sexual. Whew, thank God. All right, at least not that we know of. Anyways, <laughs> you know how in some parts of the country, a popular addition to any vehicle is attaching a big set of bullhorns to the front of the hood? Looks awesome. Well, some guy in Nebraska has raised the stakes by simply retrofitting his car so that an actual gigantic live bull can ride shotgun and it has attracted both confusion from onlookers and the attention of local police god i don't have the rule book on me but this seems illegal show me the law show me the law officer or let me be on my way yeah well let's let's toss to news channel nebraska's coverage of this police division responded to a call of a man driving eastbound on 275 with a watusi bull in his passenger seat uh well uh, the officers received a call reference a car driving into town that had a, a cow in it. Um, they thought that it was going to be, you know, like a calf, something smaller, something that actually fit inside the vehicle. And the vehicle was big enough. Well, technically. As a result, the, the officer performed a traffic stop and addressed some traffic violations that were occurring uh, with that particular uh, situation. The occupant of the vehicle was identified as Lee Meyer of Neely. The Watusi Bull's name was Howdy Doody. He was immediately pulled over by Norfolk police and they performed a routine traffic stop. The officer wrote him some warnings. Um, there were some citable issues with that situation. The officer chose to write him a warning and ask him to take the animal back home and, and to leave the city. Meyer and Howdy Doody are on their way back home, and no one was hurt. Wow. 
lot going on here. So, um, yeah. First off, that bull, howdy doody, <laughs> has some of the biggest horns we've ever seen. Like, they're God very large. Damn. Yeah. Apparently, he's a he's a cross between a Watusi and a Longhorn. Yo, what that Watusi do? Uh, yeah, you would not want to be on the receiving end of those things, especially at 70 miles per hour. You've got to feel bad for anyone biking down the highway or... Yeah, you want to give this car a wide berth, because uh, those horns, they, they Yeah, it's going to scoop you up like that missile in true eyes. It's like, it's like five feet of horn. And if it's not it's the ridiculous. horn that gets you, it's the uh, explosive diarrhea coming out yeah, of this thing. Yeah, so, um... That, that does appear to be a de decommissioned police car, which is always a fun element. You're free to go, officer. And yes, the car has its own little set of horns, despite having really no need for them. And yes, it would appear that Howdy Doody just simply shits all over the back of the car while he's riding shotgun. Presumably pissing. And uh, yeah, I mean, probably pissing all up inside the car the whole time, too. Um, but you know, when you love an animal that much, you know, dealing with the piss and shit, it's just part of the job. Yeah, you take it home, you, you get the hose out. It's fine. Yeah, it's easy. fine. And you know, cow shit, there are worse smells. Hey, grow some radioactive mushrooms out of that thing. Yeah. There you go. May maybe that's how he got the idea in the first place. Could be. I got a tra traveling, uh, mushroom factory. So yeah, the owner, Lee Meyer, has apparently been driving around like this for years and explained to NBC News how it came to be. I had thought about it, I had talked about it, and one of my granddaughters said it was a bad idea and I shouldn't do it. So I had to show her that Grandpa could do it. It might have been a bad idea, but I did it anyway. I showed that stupid granddaughter. Yeah, that's the spirit. Hey, how about that? You fucking cuck. God damn it! He showed me! <laughs> I own, totally owned my granddaughter with that. Uh, meanwhile, Lee's wife, Rhonda, told the AP, the amount of money that he spent on this whole darn project between the car and the bull, I could have had a brand new kitchen. So it sounds like things are great down at the, down at the, the household, yeah. uh, the Meyer household. She's uh, still getting, uh, she's cooling down her refrigerator with a giant block of ice with pliers every day. <laughs> Is the ice man here yet? Lee! <laughs> Lee, we need a new refrigerator. Nah. Nah. I'm taking the bull down to the movies. Howdy Doody's got, got a lot of needs. He's... Howdy Doody wants to see Oppenheimer. There's, uh, there's a lot of there's some weird mold growing in the car, probably from the gallons and gallons of piss he just lets loose on there every time we ride. Yeah. Anyway, I'm tired of your nagging, Rhonda. <laughs> Me and Howdy Doody are going to go for a little ride. We're going to take a spin around town. Everyone loves yeah. it. Wave yeah. at the people. Howdy Doody doesn't complain. Yeah, that's right. Howdy Doody doesn't ask to stop for bathroom breaks. No, he just goes. Just goes. Why can't you be more like Howdy Doody? Anyways, uh, this episode isn't sponsored. Hey, click the join button. So yeah, if we got we got sixty seconds to kill. If you're feeling generous, uh, there is a join button. Uh, you pay five dollars a month, and you get some some cool uh, emotes and stuff. And uh, everyone knows that you everyone paid knows. Money. And or or if uh, one time thing, you can uh, do a little dono uh, with uh, the thank button. Or you can do nothing at all. Or, it's yeah, just, it's uh, really no. Honestly, just watching the shows is the ultimate paycheck. Or, you know? But at least leave a like because... Oh, yeah, you that, hit the like that button. Does, it's apparently very important for very the video important. Uh, getting in people's feeds and actually getting views. So. You can you can judge the views by the amount of likes these days. Have we wasted yeah. enough time? Is it time for headlines yeah. yet? Yeah, so uh, with that out of the way, it's, yeah. time, it's time for the headlines half of the show. Just the weirdest, wildest, crazy headlines from around the world, starting with... Seneca Falls Walmart evacuated after man dressed as a cowboy with replica gun causes disturbance. Bow! 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 Hello, 911. Some sort of time traveler from the Old West has arrived. It's me, Calvin Klein. Yeah, I guess you, you come from some local rodeo dress-up thing. Yeah. It is hilarious because, like, it sounds like what happened here is literally just what happens on a daily basis at every uh, retail establishment in many parts of the South. Yes. A guy dressed like a cowboy... Uh, carrying a gun. In this case, not even a real gun. Yeah, uh, but, this happens uh, with real guns all the time. But yeah, these uh, the people of the North, not not as down with that as the people of the South. No. Um, and yeah, this is... I, I, every time I've been in the South and I see someone open carrying, it does definitely uh, makes me uncomfortable. I don't know if I'd call the fucking cops about it, but... Uh, definitely heightens the tension in the yeah, room. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, well, there's a gun Especially, I, I, I'd say it, uh, I've said it before, but it, going home to Florida... And like, you know, I don't drink, but meeting friends at a bar just to hang out. Yeah. And people, just seeing people with open carry at a bar is like one wrong move. And it's it's a fucking shootout like the Wild West. Here. Yeah. I mean, that happened. The last time I was home, those two people were shooting at each other from their cars on the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, oh, why? 
Why is the road shut down in the middle of the night? Oh, you know, just uh, your standard Florida shootout. Yeah, just a little, it happens. It happens. It's the price of freedom. Whew. It certainly is not free. No, it's not. It costs no. uh, tens of thousands of lives per year. Yes. Gunshot victim at White Sox game reportedly snuck weapon in by hiding it in her fat fold. <laughs> the European mind cannot comprehend this headline. They really can't. This no. is uh, this is a very American headline here. You've got uh, carrying guns and you've got m morbid obesity to the extent that a, a firearm can safely fit underneath fat folds. And also... Not even just like fit underneath it, like it... it the what you would assume metal detectors yeah this is didn't a, go off because it was blanketed by human fat right this is chicago um and you know like most places uh, most sports sporting events uh yeah you got to go through a metal detector but yeah i guess having it underneath this much body fat mm -hmm. uh didn't go off or maybe it went off and they they patted around and they're like all right just look i don't want to touch they're this just lady. fucking fat and yeah. uh and, uh, yeah, and there it sat until it was accidentally discharged and uh, hit the person. Did her fat folds pull the trigger? Uh, yeah. Wow. Seems like it. That's crazy. Hit her and the person next to her. Well, uh, America's broken. I don't know what else to say. This is the most American headline that could ever exist. You know, this wouldn't have happened if, uh, if Illinois had open carry. Yeah, then she, she could, could just have put it in a, in a or, real yeah. holster. Yeah. This would have never happened. A cute little holster. She would have found some other way to uh, harm herself and the people around her. Yes, yeah. Uh, that, that would have been, yeah. Hiding fireworks in there or something. Just something fun. Speaking of guns, Texas National Guard member fires across Rio Grande, wounds Mexican citizen. I, I'm so happy that every Republican candidate uh, this cycle is openly advocating for war with Mexico. It's very strange. And I'm sure it's not influencing the behavior of uh, our border forces in any way by causing them to, I don't know, fire live rounds across an international border. Yeah, it seems weird. And in this case, hitting a guy that wasn't, he was literally just like working out in the, on the Mexico. I guess there was people trying to cross the border, but it's like, just do what you always do. Catch them. They just swam across a fucking river. They're going to be tired. You just round them up. No, just they need to firing be... across, missing yeah. the target, and just hitting a dude, like, jogging. <sighs> Great shit. We love it, don't we? A lot going on here. Uh... Nightclub workers' testicles bitten after 19-year-old denied entry, Michigan cops say. Yeah, what I assumed, the, being the bouncer, the safest job in the world. No. Not so safe anymore. You, you get your balls bit. Yeah, you usually think they're going to throw a, throw a swing at you. Yeah. No. In this case, I guess the guy was already on the ground and is part of his, you know, last ditch attempt at, uh, I don't know what, got his mouth around the bouncer's balls, took, your, a, took a chomp. Your honor, I thought I was biting his thigh, but the bouncer has very long balls. How was I supposed to know how long his balls were? Ugh. It was simple assault. This, this would be just so upsetting to happen and painful. Very painful. Are you kidding? You know, you, uh, you it, as a child, I feel like as a kid, you get hit in the balls a lot. It hurts all the time. Yeah. But as an adult, it doesn't happen as much. Yeah, because uh, there's, you're in less situations yeah, where it, it could just, possibly happen. Uh, although uh, the dog that I got a year ago um, is just the perfect size and weight and temperament that I get hit in the balls constantly now. Sometimes it's the first thing. Oh, yeah. The first thing I'm aware of. Uh, in First thing in the morning. Uh, sometimes I am awoken by a swift uh, jab to the nutsack. Yeah, I've done it on my bike a couple times in the past couple of years. And I, for the ladies out there, the the loyal 10% of viewers out there, uh, it's not even like a sharp pain. I mean, it is a sharp pain. But the aching afterwards for like two minutes afterwards. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah you think giving birth is bad? I'm kidding. That's the hardest <laughs> job in the world. Uh, but it is it is it is a different kind of pain. It is a pain that is so hard to suffer through. Yeah, it's not even that it's painful. It's just like debilitating. Like, yeah, you just can't do anything for like a couple minutes. It almost knocks the wind out of you. Yeah. So, well, thank you, evolution. Yes. They wanted they, us they to know, protect. They want us to know how important those balls are. Yes. If we if we don't put all that pain there, people are they people are going to get their balls bitten off by yeah. nineteen year olds every day, and then for fun, what'll happen to the human race? Nobody knows. 
Large scale gambling ring uncovered in Milford after police raid backyard volleyball games. Okay. A lot happening here. I need to know more, but basically it sounds like, you know, hundreds of people showing up at a house. It's, it's, it's everything you'd picture with an illegal gambling operation, maybe like a cockfighting thing, but it's just people playing volleyball in back. Look, volleyball is very popular. Didn't you see that picture this week of the uh, record attendance for the women's volley- volleyball? Like well, 98,000 people watching volleyball? It, it, it's a very fun sport. I, I played volleyball as a youth, and yeah. uh, I was terrible at it because it's it's difficult. It yeah, is a fast paced game. You very, need to be, lots of teamwork, lots you need of to be coordination. Very agile. You need to all be on the same page. Yeah. But it's also just not the sport you picture a bunch of degenerates d- running an illegal gambling ring off of. Um, and also, like, who are the, the. The article doesn't say anything about, like, who were the players? Like, were there teams? How did this work? Because it's another, volleyball is another sport that, like, unless you're, like, 25 years or younger, yeah, like, you're probably just not going to be that good at it. It requires, like, physical attributes. There's a bunch of old that, Russian guys. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Not a lot of jumping, but uh, a lot of heart. They got the spirit. And that's they, all that they matters. They have the spirit. Florida woman's finger severed in library drop box. That's what you get for reading, bitch. And using public services. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll teach you. She's probably probably because uh, the book she was returning had uh, movies in it or had, like uh, sex. Yeah, it was probably a gay book. That's right. That's uh, that's what you get. No, this is fucking horrifying. Yes. <laughs> Putting the book. I guess they were like, "Oh, you're supposed to drop the book in the box, not put your hand in there." I don't understand the mechanism of how that happened, but she lost a finger. That sucks. Yeah. Over such a fun and enlightening activity. That'll teach you to read. That's now, why I now that library's gonna close down if she sues it. Maybe. Maybe that's what that was the plan. Uh, DeSantis having trouble getting the, the libraries in Florida closed his way, but yeah. uh, just make the library liable for some horrific accident. Yeah. And then you'll have to shut them down. Maybe she was like a, like a weirdo DeSantis person. And it was like, now they can use the term uh, books bite back. Don't fuck around with our library system. <laughs> Chop your finger off. But yeah, this is why I use the, the Libby app. Yeah, nice and safe. I've stepped foot in the L.A. Public Library a, whole, a handful of times. I get all my books over the internet. Beep, bop, boop. Yeah. No need to stick my hand in any unknown receptacles. Nope. You never know what's going on in there. Well, in one case, you do. It's a sharp edge that'll take your finger right off. NSA orders employees to spy on the world with dignity and respect. It's the American way. We're going to spy on the world in... We're just going to dig dig, hey. dig around in their lives like uh, like a bunch of creeps, but with dignity and respect. Come on, guys. I am looking at your hard drive. Respectively. <laughs> Respectfully. Re- <no>. Respectfully. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah. It, it, just it, like those 98,000 people watching that women's college volleyball competition. I just love I am, the sport. <laughs> I, am here, I am here for the athleticism. I love the sport. I am watching this sport respectfully. I mean, what can I say? It, it helps that they look great. <laughs> what can, I mean, they're so tall. You don't see you don't see tall women like that all that often. They're all so big. Yeah. And uh, wow, it's like they could just crush you. And uh, it's fun to think about. Got it. it. That's why the big uh, attendance numbers right now because they're going to change to those longer shorts soon. Oh, everyone's getting it all in now. It is pretty fucking wild that, like, <laughs> for so long that yeah, it was just underwear. Like, like, just, yeah, like just half yes. halfway exposed yeah. butt cheeks. Like yeah. it's. It's pretty crazy that that's don't like, like, not sure that's necessary. Yeah, but, uh, I don't know. Like, I, there's a, there's been a few times where people have been like, "This is what the men's volleyball team would look like if they had the same uniform." They look great, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, and, and probably a lot of people would like it, but yeah. there's a reason they don't do that because it's it's more for the viewers' enjoyment than for actual <laughs> athleticism. Record-breaking numbers. But speaking of uh, women's sports, mother of beleaguered Spanish soccer chief starts hunger strike as calls mount for his resignation. Uh, so Spain won the World Cup, the yeah. Women's World Cup, uh, a yeah. few weeks back after America fucking blew it because they were too liberal. Um, <laughs> yeah, too woke. Too woke. Yeah. Um, but uh, even though they're the same team that won last time, while being the, that's, exactly as, that's as woke the evolution of wokeness, you see. But uh, yeah, no, this is crazy. So Spain wins World Cup. I don't even know if they've ever won it before. But anyway, uh, immediately the head of like the Spanish Soccer Federation comes down and just grabs one of the players and. 
like lands a kiss on her like like oh he's yeah one of, i saw this like this he's one so of the uncomfortable one of the navy guys returning from like japan at the end of world war yeah two just, like oh this is gonna i'm gonna look so cool when i do this yeah but just like immediately they're just like that that dude just like sexually assaulted <laughs> like in front of everyone guy sexually assaulted me right after the most important moment of my life yeah uh so yeah the the women of the team they're just like that's not cool uh he, he needs to resign or none of us are going to keep playing and he has refused to even like apologize. It's a whole fucking thing. He's like, what did I do? What? Uh, so yeah, his mother, it's always, always good when your mother comes in to defend your their adult son. Is uh, His yeah. mother's uh, sitting in some church in Spain doing a hunger strike until they leave her little boy alone. Yeah, that's just like Elon Musk's mom who is currently starving herself until Mark Zuckerberg invites him over to mm-hmm. play in the backyard. But respectfully. Yes. In a joke competition. I am starving myself. Not a real fight. Respectfully. Reddit users are reporting Christian websites for violating Virginia's new porn identification law, citing vulgar passages in the Bible. This keeps happening. And yeah. I love it every time. Using every... their own stuff against them. And yeah, there's some there are some passages in the Bible that uh get you rock hard. I mean they definitely it's it's X rated language. Yeah. They're saying shit that if it was in a movie, it would be a hard R. Yeah. Um it would be M for mature in a game. There, there's passages talking about like cum and, uh, and dicks, yeah. dick sizes. Well, uh, get it out of there. Yeah. So Virginia. So um, we're gonna need that Bible to be uh, behind, you know, behind the cage, the paywall. Oh yeah. The ID checker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to go in the back room? We got the Bible. Got to go through the beads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And final headline, Louisiana professor asked students to paint their faces to fulfill his clown fetish. Was he upfront about that? No. Because no. It sound, the headline makes it sound like he was like, so, by the way, I got a clown I have fe- a clown fetish yeah. who wants to help me get off. Yeah. No, it was much weirder than that. Um, he was a professor of geography. Uh-huh. And so he kept like assigning, he's like, um, so uh, you guys, uh, for extra credit, uh, come into class in uh, kabuki makeup. Design your own kabuki makeup and come into class. The sillier, the better. And then, like every year at the beginning of the school year, he'd put up on like the school's Facebook or whatever, like, "Hey, anyone who needs a little extra money, I'm a aspiring makeup artist. Like, come, let me do your makeup." Yeah. And he'd uh, put him in clown makeup. But uh, yeah, they eventually discovered his Reddit account where he <laughs> he would like write about how he has a clown fetish. Yeah. And, uh, he he likes he likes tricking his. Uh, his students into putting on clown makeup to get him rock hard. Damn. Yeah. Sounds bad. Does sound. We do things here a little bit down here in Louisiana. Also, like if you had this guy, what does that mean for your grade? The guy had a clown fetish. Can I? Can I, that? The, Retroactively, you get give an me a. an A. Yeah. Yeah. If your roommate dies, you get an A. Yeah. And if your teacher has, is exposed for having a clown fetish. You also get an A. This is going to make, make a great teen comedy. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't done it already. Please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, we have two brand new episodes for you to watch. We got Mitch McConnell uh, and Ted Cruz both Ted. both both losing their minds. Lion's head. Uh, and then we also have uh, Tech News Day about Elon Musk getting heckled by gamers. Wow. People. Wow. Wow. You hate to see it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.